Hi friends, this is Hannah from Handmade by Design and today I'm making three projects that are all black and white. One black and white tree with mini pine cones, one wreath and one wall hanging. DIY number one is a black and white winter pine cone tree. I'm always looking for trees and branches to use on my projects and I was so happy when I found this 14 inch tree on sale for $2 at five and below. I bought five of them and I can't wait to use them on future projects. For this project, you're going to need the tree, some white acrylic paint, paint brushes, ribbon, black and white ribbon that I bought at the Dollar Tree and black wire that I got at the Dollar Tree, scissors, miniature pine cones from the Dollar Tree, sparkling snow, and I think I bought this at Walmart, but they do have some at the Dollar Tree. Beacon Value Adhesive Spray from the Dollar Tree. I love this adhesive spray. The snow sticks perfectly on the trees and it stays forever. It just lasts and lasts. I love this product. Spanish Moss from the Dollar Tree. Some masking tape. Good glue gun and glue sticks. And a container to mix paint with. Using white acrylic paint, mix it 50% paint and 50% water. I didn't measure it, but I just needed enough to cover a paper plate full of miniature pine cones. So mix the paint and the water very well and just pour the pine cones into the container. I mixed the pine cones until they were completely covered and then I spread them on a paper towel to dry. Next, I added painter's tape to paint stripes onto the container. I laid the first piece of tape, and in order for the tape to be evenly spaced, I put the tape next to the first piece backwards and rolled it over so that it was evenly spaced or very nearly evenly spaced. I used a soft sided scraper to go over the edges to further ensure that there would be no bleeding. I used white acrylic paint and painted all the way around the planter. We're going to need two coats of paint to get complete coverage. So I used my heat tool to dry the first layer of paint. Next, I applied a second layer of paint and allowed it to dry while I worked on the rest of the project. Next, I began to adhere the pine cones to the tip of each branch of the tree. I used Gorilla Glue because it holds very well and I didn't want to take the chance that any of the pine cones would fall off the tree after it was finished. I used a dot of glue on each pine cone and just set it at the tip of each branch. Some of the pine cones weren't flat at the bottom and I cut off a little piece just to make sure that they were flat and adhered well to the tips of the branches. I worked my way around the front of the tree and when I was finished, I turned the tree around and finished in the back. When I was happy with the way that the tree looked, I removed the painter's tape and I was so happy because I paid a little extra for frog tape and the lines were perfect. Cover your work area and the planter portion of the tree with paper towels. Use the spray adhesive and give the tree a light spray. Sprinkle with a light coating of snow and repeat until you're happy with the way that the tree looks. Once you're satisfied with the way that the tree looks on one side, flip it over to the other side and repeat the exact same process. This Beacon Value glue comes in small bottles 
It has no odor and it's perfect to use on small projects and in small areas. I really can't tell you how much I love this glue. Once you're done adding all of the snow, give the entire tree a final coat of the spray adhesive. Using a dry paintbrush, go around the entire tree and just brush off any snow that seems like it's too thick. I added Spanish moss to the leftover paint and combined it until it turned white. You don't really need much moss, just enough to cover the top of the planter. Apply the moss all the way around the planter after it's dry. I didn't let it dry, but you really should because you run the risk of getting white paint onto the black stripes. So I really suggest that you let your Spanish moss dry. Once the Spanish moss looks exactly how you want it, add snow all over the top of the Spanish moss. I went all around the outside of the container to make sure that there was snow on top of all of the moss. I didn't record this, but using the small black and white ribbon from the Dollar Tree, I wrapped three pieces of ribbon on the bottom, in the center, and at the top of the planter. When I glued the three pieces of ribbon around the planter, I made sure that all of the seams were directly underneath each other, right in front of the planter, where I planned on putting the bow so that the seams would not be visible. When making the bow, I did not measure the loops, but gauged the size according to how large the planter was. On this bow, there's six loops on either side of the bow. I just pulled the ribbon directly from the spool and holding the ribbon between my thumb and forefinger, I looped the ribbon around six times and made sure that all the ribbon was the same side on both sides of where I was gonna connect the ribbon. Like this one is too short. So I'm gonna pull it up a little bit so that they're all even. And I make sure they're even on the other side And that looks just right. So I use a little bit of wire and I wrap it tightly around two or three times and snip off the excess with scissors. Next, I just cut the bow at an angle And then I fluff out all of the loops. I pull them all gently apart. And I open up all the loops as I go along. And I just work with the ribbon until I'm happy with the way that it looks. There you go. That's a pretty ribbon. Then I place the ribbon in the front of the planter and as we said, directly over the seams where the bands were glued. I then glue two miniature pine cones to the bow. And I love the way the black and white check ribbon looks with the black and white stripes. It's so adorable. Next, I just cut the ribbons at an angle and this project is finished. I absolutely love the way this tree turned out. It is just beautiful. I don't think the camera does it justice. I fluff up the bow a little bit and this is how it looks.
DIY number two is a wall hanging that's a winter deer. For this project, you'll need a plain piece of 12 inch wood from the Dollar Tree, lamb's ear. I got mine at Walmart and it was about $1.25 for that amount of lamb's ear. The same thin black ribbon that we used in the last project, pine cones, miniature pine cones painted white, a paintbrush, black acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree, scissors, wire cutters, and a mop from the Dollar Tree, a hot glue gun, and glue sticks. You all know by now that I prefer Gorilla Brand glue sticks. On this particular mop, it was very easy just to pull the strands out one by one, but it's also not difficult to take the mop apart using wire cutters. I removed each string and I folded them in half and set them aside, all going in the same direction. This keeps the project organized and you can finish it much more quickly. I painted the plaque with black acrylic paint and I made sure to cover the sides and the front completely. I only used one coat of paint and I was really pleased with the amount of coverage that I got from the Dollar Tree paint. Once I finished painting the plaque, I glued all the tips of the loop together using a bead of hot glue. When you're making your project, this ensures that everything goes on quickly and that there's no spaces in between your strands of fiber. The paint was still a little bit wet, so I finished drying the plaque with a heat gun. After it was completely dry, I flipped the plaque over, laid down a bead of glue, and started applying the mop strings from the loop. It Seriously, it took me less than five minutes to apply about 35 loops of the mop. It was so easy to do. I just laid a bead of glue and made sure that I pressed the strands close to each other, laid down another bead of glue, added more strands, and then I laid down the third bead of glue and finished applying all of the strands. This project was so fun to make and I loved all of the different elements. We had the wooden plaque, we had fabric, we had a deer, a fabric deer head uh, that, that was an ornament. I just unscrewed um, the ornament top from the top of the head and used that as a centerpiece. But we had florals and moss and pine cone and a ribbon. It was just full of lots of different textures. And the end result was just, just charming. I love the way this project turned out. After you apply all of the loops, add another bead of glue just directly under the top of the loops and go over them with a silicone finger protector from the Dollar Tree. Turn the plaque over and apply the deer ornament directly to the center of the plaque. Cut all of the leaves off of the sprig and begin applying them on either side of the deer, trying to make sure that you get about the same amount of leaves on one side of the plaque as you do the other and trying to make sure that there's no gaps in between the leaves and the leaves are all the same size on both sides for symmetry. I love the lamb's ear on this plaque. 
It's a soft, muted color. The texture is is just beautiful. And it really gives the whole plaque a kind of an understated look. And yet it looks really elegant, but it's kind of farmhouse. I think it would really, really go well with nearly any decor. And after that, I start gluing on the pine cones, which gives it yet another element. And they too are really understated. And this whole plaque is coming together so beautifully. I, I love it. I'm just so happy with it. You can leave the strands of the mop as they are, but each mop strand has four smaller strands that make up each strand. So I decided to unravel all of the strands and you can even take it a step further and brush or comb through it. But I actually really, really like the way that it looked when all of the strands were just completely unwound. It gave a whole new texture to all of the strands and it made all of the strands look thicker and fuller. The end result is just beautiful. No one would ever guess that this beautiful textile came from a mop head. I wanted to make it shorter and the ends were a bit uneven, so I just used a straight edge. I, I used the same kind of board that I made the piece with and cut off all of the ends so that they were completely even. I then hot glued a piece of jute as a hanger to the back of the board and I also applied glue and masking tape over each piece of jute to give it additional strength. The hot glue melts into the tape and it really gives it strength. In keeping with the theme, with all of the projects that I'm making today, I hot glue a piece of the Spanish moss that has been painted white onto the plaque, in between the leaves, and directly under the deer. Once the glue sets up a little bit, I hot glue the bow onto the Spanish moss. And just like on the bow in the black and white tree, I hot glue two pine cones to the center of the bow. I decided to distress the wood a little bit. So using uh, you can use light grit sandpaper, but I just used an emery board and I went around all of the edges, the fronts and the sides on both sides of the plaque. And then I used the emery board and rubbed against the plaque, just getting off a little bit of paint on each side, but rubbing the emery board in the direction of the wood grain. And this project is complete. winter white wreath. For this project, you're going to need a spin mop. I buy mine from Amazon and they're $2.80 each. These are great and easy for making wreaths. They're so fluffy and pretty. They're just perfect. I have a black and white deer that I'm pretty sure that I purchased either from the Dollar Tree or from the Dollar General. The black and white theme matches perfectly with the other two products and it fits right onto the wreath like a glove. So you need the deer, you need a pencil, scissors, an X-Acto knife, 
a glue gun, and foam board. I begin by making a circle with a pencil about one inch inside of the tips of the mop head on foam board. Once I've completed the circle, I use the X-Acto knife from the Dollar Tree and following the line as closely as possible and trying to keep the wreath circular, I cut through the foam board and remove the wreath portion from the rest of the board. Next, I place the wreath on top of the foam board just to ensure that the that foam board is not going to show through the edges of the fiber from the mop. I then add a bead of glue all around onto the mop, trying to stay an inch inside where the edge of the foam board is, and then going back again and going onto the highest portion of the mop, which is in the center of the mop. I then place the foam board directly onto the mop. I center it as best I can and place it on the mop and hold it until the glue has adhered. Next, I fluff up the mop, but then going from the center of the mop, I make sure that all of the strands are facing directly outward evenly from the center of the mop. I then go around the top half of the mop working from left to right and right to left and add a few beads of glue in between the strands trying to keep it light and fluffy until the mop stands up on its own without folding over on the top half and the bottom half hangs naturally. This is an important step because you don't want your wreath drooping from the top. Next, I use hot glue and I adhere the deer directly to the center of the wreath. Once the deer is fully adhered to the wreath, I remove the tag from the inside of the sweater and then I check all of the strands of the mop with the deer standing up to make sure that none are folding over on the top. I go back and add a bead of glue wherever it's necessary. Next, I glue miniature pine cones around the top of the scarf and I use white acrylic paint and give them a good coat of paint to make them look like they're covered in snow. This matches with all of the other pine cones on the two other projects. This deer wreath is absolutely adorable. I'm in love with it. Next, I take a pipe cleaner, I fold it in half, and I twist it around, and I determine where the top of where it will hang best from the top, and I glue it to the back of the styrofoam board. After I glue it to the styrofoam board, I add two pieces of masking tape and glue those on either side of um, the pipe cleaner because the glue melts into the masking tape and makes the holder very strong. This wreath couldn't be any easier to make. It's a short little project that you could do with your children. It's just a perfect DIY for beginners. And this project is done.
Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you and I hope that you're inspired to make something beautiful. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit the notification button and you will be notified the next time I post. Again, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.